a lot of my friends are comedians. I'm a comedian too, by the way. I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. But I was talking to one of my friends recently. He told me he resents other comedians if they're doing too well. I'm like, do you ever resent me? He's like, no, you're fine. And I was like, yeah, I'm worried that some of my jokes are too corny. He's like, don't worry. Every comedian worries that your jokes are too corny. I've done some weird shows. I did a show for a bachelorette party once, and they didn't tell the bride there was going to be a comedian, so she was really confused when I showed up. She's like, did you guys just have a low budget for strippers or something? <laughs> like, they didn't have a microphone. They had a penis draw, which doesn't really amplify your voice. And there was, like, an older lady hitting on me after the show, but she was a lot older than me. Like, not like a cougar, but like a saber-toothed tiger, <laughs> I guess. I did some shows recently in Newark, New Jersey, and... There was kind of a low turnout there, which hurts more there because I know there's nothing else to do. <laughs> They're like, you want to go to this comedy show? No, there's a trash can fire. I want to see how that turns out. I am always afraid I'm going to offend someone from there. I guess I just have to not go back there, which is what I was hoping to do. <laughs> Either way. But, but I had some really tough shows there. And... Um, like, I was doing self-deprecating jokes. I was like, yeah, I suck. And they were like, yes, we, we agree with that. Uh, or, like, one lady was laughing a lot, but not at my punchlines, just at me as a person, I guess. <laughs> one time I did this show, it was, like, an outdoor concert, and then I came out and started doing stand-up, and I think the crowd was expecting music, so they weren't happy about it. <laughs> Someone threw an apple onto the stage, and I don't think it was, like, to help me out nutritionally. I think <laughs> they were just encouraging me to leave. <laughs> I felt like I needed a cool comeback for someone throwing an apple. I didn't know what to say. I was like, oh, there's an apple. That's all I came up with. <laughs> One of the weirdest shows I did, I did a show for circus clowns. It was like a fundraiser, and they showed up in clown makeup in the audience. But they were also a really tough crowd. That's really confusing, because like, it looks like they're smiling, but they're not. <laughs> At one point, one of the clowns stood up to leave. I just ended the show so I could say I got a partial standing ovation. <laughs> when I first moved to New York, this guy's like, hey, can you do my afternoon show? And I'm like, how much does it pay? He's like, nothing. I'm like, great, I'm in. <laughs> I showed up, it was like in a library in New York, and there were two people in the audience, which I'm kind of exaggerating because one of them had to leave to use the computer. <laughs> So I went on stage. I just had to, like, say my jokes to one person. And then right away, like, two librarians came in. They were like, hey, it's 4.30. We're closing, so you have to wrap up the show. I was like, did I just get heckled by more people than there are in the audience? Can I at least check out a book on overcoming depression or something? And then the guy in the crowd was nice. He wasn't really in the crowd. He was the crowd, I guess. But... He wanted to be nice, but he didn't know what to say. He's like, hey, man, keep hope alive. <laughs> and that's not really what you want to hear after doing comedy. Like, you're hoping someone will be like, that was hilarious. Not like, oh, there's a sense of hopelessness. <laughs> the host of that show was really nice afterwards. He's like, I like your voice. I'm like, oh, like my comedic voice? He's like, actually, your volume level. It's really good for a library. <laughs> so... But I realized recently, I have the kind of voice that whatever time I answer the phone, the person immediately apologizes for waking me up. <laughs> I have to be like, I actually wasn't asleep. I, I'm in the middle of a workout right now, so. <laughs> this is probably me and my most alert, I think. My first paid gig, I was supposed to like go out and warm up the crowd. I'm not really good at warming up a crowd. Usually they bring me in if the crowd's too good and they want to like cool things off a little bit. <laughs> I ended up getting replaced halfway through the show, and then a few years later, I got to go back and headline the comedy club, and the owner was like, I thought it was so cool that even though you got fired, you stuck around to watch the rest of the show to study comedy and get better. I was like, actually, I had to stay because one of the other comedians was my ride home. <laughs> so. But I like doing comedy. I'll be doing some comedy later in my set tonight. <laughs> 